Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Jerry Three 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 with the second game for today. It's going to be Yogsdoth and Norm Six Sixteen. It's going back to the brackets. Apparently, one cut and Kane finished. One cut apparently forfeiting after one one. I'm pretty sure that is a forfeit. I don't think that was any way of disqualification. Sorry, Kane forfeiting. Not, my mistake. Not one cut is ahead playing against Randy. If Yogsdoth and Norm Six Sixteen is the game right now. And Cubay Mortis Mortis will be another game later on, which I may cast, but for now we have Yogsatoth versus Norm 616. So active. Norm 616 starting in the just call him Norm for now. Norm starting in the northeast corner of the map. Going for hovercrafts is red comet, by the way. Vehicle, hovercraft, tanks, all welcome. Bots are questionable. But I play, neither player is going for bots right now, just going for the obvious good option. Yeah. Norm going for a few daggers before going for the quill. Three daggers and a quill, so a bit more aggressive. We have been seeing a lot of aggressive starts this entire tournament. Though is actually going for a fairly passive start. It took a little while to get their darts going. Building up their economy first and a quick radar as well. So Yogstoth knows what's up, while Norm616 a bit more focused on getting quick energy rather than quick metal, and opting to harass out the economy instead of trying to build their own quickly. Now, the daggers will be able to get rid of these darts without issue. That's not the point though, the scrubbers are going to be the bigger problem, and scrubbers aren't going to be up for a while, sorry, scorchers. Not scrubbers, there's no unit named scrubber anymore, these are called daggers now! But yeah, the daggers will be able to take care of the darts without issue, but the scorchers they're a bit more problematic, however, even this might be the biggest deal. Unfortunately for Norm, this dart getting behind, but Norm's on the ball. Norm sees that coming, able to handle that no problem. Norm knows what they're doing. Actually, we'll be able to get rid of this metal extractor as well. Nicely kiting that Scorcher. In case, for those of you not aware, as I know that, like I said, there are some people from the Great Goo forums who are watching. The dagger deals, well, okay, the dagger doesn't really matter. Dagger deals line splash damage. It cuts through whatever it hits. It's not relevant most of the time. Scorcher, however, deals more damage the closer it is to its opponent. It's the property of the Heat Ray weapon. Heat Rays deal more damage to nearby targets. So for Daggers, the obvious move is to stay out of the way. While the Scorchers are trying to get as close as possible to the Daggers, the Daggers are trying as best as possible to stay as far away as they can. And at this point, Norm is well ahead economically having done successful harassment despite Yogsatoth's opening that went rather focused on the economy. However, unfortunately, the Dagger's trying to plow through the Scorchers and not succeeding. One of them, however, able to survive, but two of them go down, and one Scorcher as well goes down to pay the price, but still, it doesn't matter. Another Dagger gone down, and that entire opening Dagger raiding party goes down to the Scorchers, and that is not terribly surprising. I'm a little surprised Norm is not switching over to Maces yet. But no, instead, continue to go for daggers. The thing is, when it comes to raiding phase of the game, it really comes down to how confident you are in your micro. If you're not particularly confident in your raider micro, or it's not really working out, it's usually best to switch to riots and just use the cost effectiveness. Because raiders microed well can last most of the game. Like, microed really well, as in, like, Golda or Randy level micro. As in, the top player in the game's micro will be able to make raiders last a considerably long time in most games. But in general, switching over to Riots is the more cost-effective solution. The downside, of course, is speed. Raiders are much faster than Riots are. But the upside is that they will cost-effectively get through your opponent's forces, forcing them into the Riot game, thus nullifying... Or not the Riot game, but the Riot Assault game. Thus forcing them... Well, Riot Assault Skirmisher. The speed advantage or disadvantage is nullified as a result. There's no difference in speed because basically the units are already at about the same speed. There aren't as many raiders, and once you have radar, it becomes a lot easier to figure what's going on. Speaking of which, Norm is pure line of sight. Yogstoth, however, we did see, he got radar, or they got radar as about the fourth thing they built. Haven't built any additional ones, but they are still well aware of where Norm is, and this is not giving Norm any breaks. Really, Norm cannot get through here, other than when Pathfinding screws up like that, but Norm cannot get through here without losing units because Yogstoth is fully aware of where Norm's units are. 
Yogstoth has the radar and can see them coming. Although admittedly, still going to lose a Metal Extractor, but also going to be able to take out one of the daggers. Two of the daggers, Yogstoth not paying enough attention here, loses both daggers, could have lost zero. But, unfortunately not the best thing. Norma, however, does have an economic advantage. I mean, yeah, they are losing a lot of forces. That's the one thing, they're losing a lot of their army into Yogstoth's base. There's a lot of metal donation. Thankfully, it's kind of cheap, 34 metal each. So, honestly, not losing all that much. I'm not donating all that much, but still, Yogstoth should be switching over to maces and possibly scalpels now, if not sooner. Really, the daggers have run their course compared to the scorches. The scorches just have the advantage. I mean, the daggers, large numbers, I suppose, can work, but it's just getting the micro properly is kind of tricky. Norm has been taking advantage of the situation to push economic advantage, but Norm's commander about to get. Well, there was about to be a dive on the commander from the Scorchers. If five Scorchers had to be more than enough to kill a commander, especially an unupgraded or barely upgraded recon commander. The Scorchers just moving north, very confidently moving north to get rid of the commander here. And they will be able to get rid of a couple power plants, but not much beyond that, actually. Actually, no, never mind. What am I saying? Solar Cloud goes down, another Solar Cloud goes down, and a third one goes down, and Yogg's same time, does have small raid attacking their base, but has switched over to slashers. Well, no switch to scalpels or ra or maces from Yogstoth. Sorry, from Norm is forthcoming. So Norm, honestly, what is what is it they're trying to do? And as Scuzzy pointing out in the chat, and this is very true, daggers are really dependent on their alpha damage. They're dependent on the initial damage from their first attack. They depend on a giant burst from having a dozen daggers all at once. Because daggers I'm either can shoot through each other or have such a small projectile damage box that they don't need a whole lot of free space to be able to shoot as a group. However, we are going to switch into halberds. Going to be trying to use that to basically distract the slashers while the daggers get in. But no, just get scalpels. <laughs> I don't know why... Norm is so reluctant to get scalpels, going for halberds instead. However, they do have enough. They have enough daggers now. They have 14 daggers coming in here, which will be sufficient, assuming the halberds do distract the slashers well enough. I mean, if Yogg stops paying attention, the slashers are just going to go for the daggers. Not even going to notice the halberds, but we'll see. Yogg does have more radar coverage. Nose is coming in, and Norm is also able to get radar coverage. Nose. Where the slashes are now, knows that there are slashes, but unfortunately, not. Well, okay, knew there were slashes. Didn't know how many though. And these daggers doing what they can, which I guess the expansion is pretty good, but they can't hit the slashers head on. The halberds coming in to distract the slashers, which will be of some use. I mean, it is stopping them from moving, but even then, more and more daggers are going down. And unfortunately, the daggers are going back. They're not coming at the slashers, are they? No, they are not. They're going through these. Oh no! Well, there are some slashes up front. They need to get through that one. That's just one slasher. The daggers can deal with it, and they're not doing so. They're taking a decent amount of damage. The slashers aren't dealing that much damage. Individual slasher won't deal that much damage to the dagger, but this group of six slashers is the big problem. And we aren't seeing, once again, still pure dagger. Leveler, however, is what Yogg's is going for, and if the slashers didn't stop the, the daggers, if it was slaves, it'd be no question, but if the slashers don't stop the daggers, a leveler certainly will. Half dozen levels most certainly will. It'll just destroy them all in one go, especially being that Norm has been point moving, not line moving most of this game. So Norm's forces are balling up all the time. I'm really surprised he's not line moving, actually. Yeah, Norm has not been line moving, so the levelers have a very easy chance of just getting rid of all the daggers. And also Norm losing but four of them, five of them, to this northwest defense. That really was excessive. There was no reason to lose that many daggers. But here come the levelers, and that will basically force Norm into the Riot game. Well, into, well, post-Raider phase. It's not quite consolidation phase. You don't have enough map control for either player to really call it consolidation. But definitely post-Raider. Levelers doing their job and doing it very well, ripping apart all of the daggers, all but five of the daggers. We had about two dozen or so from before. All but five are left. Levelers are awesome. They're actually one of my favorite units in the Light Vehicle Factory to use, personally. 
I mean, they aren't the strongest unit by any stretch. They don't have the strongest projectile, and they don't have a whole lot of health compared to, say, Ravagers. But, they do the trick when it comes to getting rid of Raiders. Actually, they do the trick of getting rid of quite a few units, in fact. Any, pretty much any list is rare. I think even Pyro is pretty much are countered by Levelers, if I recall correctly. And... Norm cannot advance with daggers. And now, there we go, switching over to slash, sorry, to scalpels. That is what has been necessary for about five minutes now. Norm switching over, possibly too late. Yogstoth does have a massive economic advantage, by the way, primarily of reclaim, which will convert to a massive military advantage and will probably move us on to round two with Norm down a game. However, Norm still has the slashers, sorry, the scalpels, Norm could, with proper positioning in Micro, get through this. Just point out though that Norm, their radar coverage has been limited. Really can't see anything that Yogstoth has. One of their radars was destroyed, the one is further in the map. I'm not sure exactly where it was, but it is no longer. And Scalpel's trying to get rid of the, score, the Slashers, but unfortunately not targeting them individually enough. So apparently Scalpel's do one shot, yeah they do one shot Slashers. Slashers have 300 health and Scalpel's... Sorry, six, three, 660 health. No, well, okay, that was actually kind of surprising. I guess scalpels don't one-shot them. However, it doesn't really matter because... Okay, I guess they do just one-shot them. The damage numbers are a little bit inaccurate, apparently. Doesn't really matter, though, sheer numbers, and... The positioning isn't actually bad. Norm is looking to be in a flanking position right now, getting rid of a couple level... Oh, ooh, not a couple, just one. This melee strike is going to go down, thanks to that mistake, and a couple of this... All of the scalpels, two of the scalpels, that was... That was one too many scalpels. That first scalpel, okay, maybe, but that second scalpel, especially going into a move like that, Norm, you need to line move. I mean, okay, that's assuming they're watching the stream, which they shouldn't be. There is a delay in case you're wondering, but yeah, assuming they're watching the stream. But yeah, you need to line move. Because the splash damage has been working wonders against the point move. Although, honestly, that's for next game. Yogstoth has the map. Yogstoth has the game. And Norm doesn't really have... I don't think any clever master or anything they can do. Maybe the commander, that's about it. But Yogstoth has military advantage, has an economic advantage, has all the map under their control. A mace switch, finally, coming in from Norm. Mace and scalpel, which, like I said, has been necessary for the last five minutes, or seven minutes now, but was too late. This mace will do what it can. The halberd's going to distract the slashers while the mace comes in, I guess, to destroy them, but even then... Not really going to matter too much. The scalpel's doing... Uh, one scalpel doing nothing. Okay, attacking one of the slashers and missing embarrassingly. Just total miss. Doesn't even bother. Just, just misses. Nope. And... Another scalpel. Okay, that one actually does its job. But then again, all these scorches coming in. The mace, good option. Bad positioning. And actually, I don't even think one mace would have been enough. Is that mace even alive? That mace is not even alive. That mace is dead. There is another mace coming down here, but this entire base has been destroyed. Norm losing what economic power they had. I don't even advantage, just power. Their economy is pretty well done for at this point. So, we're going to game two. Just no matter when Norm realizes it. I mean, Norm to his credit, or to their credit, is going for some harassment. And they're... There's quite a lot of undefended mexes around here. So harassment is definitely possible. Norm is doing what they can to get out of this. They haven't thrown in the towel quite yet. And actually the mace meeting up with the slasher, or, sorry, the scorchers could make quite the difference. It's still an uphill battle though. Norm is still gonna have a bit of a tough time with this and the halberds are gonna go down to the scorchers. All the halberds about to go down. Unfortunately, none of them are on hold fire. None of them stopped firing. But the scorchers are over the east side of the map are going to be destroyed pretty handily. More maces coming in, and slashers, sorry, scorch, scalpels. Scalpels killing the scorchers. Mace getting rid of the mason as well, and yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, whoever renamed the, the scrubber to a dagger. That helps. Spreads out the letters a bit, but still. Scalpel, scorcher, slasher. At 3 in the morning, it's a little bit tough to keep them separate. But anyway, Norm is... Well, taking back the east side of the map. It, it's still hard to call as Norm's game. I and mean, Yogstoth still is ahead. Has Air Factory now. Has 
half a dozen ravens. And it's going to go for a commander kill as soon as they can. No, never mind. Norm realizes there's not much chance. Goes on to game two. So we are going to have game two with Yogsdoth up one win in just a moment. So I'll have that for you. And then maybe we'll go on to game three. I don't know. But yeah, this is going to be supposedly the most balanced matchup of round two. And given what matchups there are in round two... Well, at this point, yeah. Cubase basically got Group L. Randy's got Group H. I'm sorry, One Cut. I'm really sorry you're in that situation. But yeah, Randy has pretty much got Group H. This is definitely even. I'm not sure about the rest of them, though. I mean, I think... Hmm. I think Steel Blue might have a chance. I think Steel Blue will have a chance against Exist if Steel Blue wins. Back Eve, Dante, I'm not quite sure. I have seen them, I've seen them play, but I don't know if that was much of a chance. But Steel Blue might have a chance against Exist. Other than that, Silent Shadow, maybe. Yeah, Silent Shadow, I think, would have a decent chance. Well, I guess Louder. Yeah, this is definitely going to be one of the even matches of round two. So I apologize. The tournament's going to be a little bit anticlimactic after this game is done. So we'll be going on to round two, apparently, right now. Okay, so I will be back with that in... I won't even just be back with that. I'll just have to update that it's round two. It's going to be on Quicksilver. Because the players are being really on the ball with their timing. Thank you guys. And thank you Magman and Mortis 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 for also being on the ball. I realize Magman took a break. Totally justified in this case though. But yeah, we're going to be moving on to game two right away. Game's about to start. So we have... Like I said, these two players are quite evenly matched. Admittedly... Norm did go for Hovercrafts, which are kind of considered a handicap. It, they're tricky to use. You do need to have a big group of daggers, and you have to make sure that they're used well. If they die, having daggers die is a big deal compared to slashers. Or, sorry, compared to scorchers. Actually, compared to slashers, too, in fact. But scorchers, particularly, because they're both the same class of unit. Anyway. Now the game is beginning. Yogg's not starting out in the southwest side of the map. And Norm starting in the northeast. Looks like Norm's going for Spider Bot Factory. Norm is okay. I can see where Norm is going with this sort of. There is it's cliffs, very heavy cliffs. I can totally see that. Yasha is going for Jump Bot Factory, which once again makes sense for the cliffs. Although I have seen life vehicles used to great effect in this map, but Jump Bots have been very popular. No surprises there. Spider Bot is a little bit surprising because while there are cliffs to the main base. Everything else is very flat. That's why the vehicles can work pretty well. Spiders tend to work a bit better when you have a large map with... Not so much a large map, but a map with a lot of cliffs throughout. This has a few strategic cliffs, but other than those, there really isn't much. I'm not sure entirely what is being planned here, though I do see that... Well, Norm going for the scout at least. I mean, this is what, this is what spiders do. I, I mean, there is this. This metal extractor here is undefended. This metal extractor here is nearly undefended. The jump bot factory is not the best at defense. The jump bot and heavy tank factory basically need stag defense in order to stay alive into the mid game. Because they just don't have enough units. The unit count is too low for them to actually be able to sustain a def solid defense force and be able to raid. They have to choose one or the other. While most factories can just choose both, they need to be very careful which one to choose. However, Norm has a Venom up as well, which is pretty much for defense at this point. Sticking on in the cliff just to stay out of the way. Be hard to hit. Be hard to know about, but yeah, getting there. Well... Oh, hey. The flea gets saved by the tree. Norm's chat message is actually of some meaning. So yeah, flea getting into the forest here just to avoid getting hit. Oh, okay, it's more of a grove, really. But... That flea... That flea actually is going to give Norm a decent amount of vision. In fact, wait. No, this isn't Norm's vision. This is Yogstad's vision. Norm, however, does see some stuff going on around here. Not enough to really be able to make any decisions about it, but still sees some stuff. He's seen some stuff. However, it's mostly good stuff. Knowing some positions. Now, if this flea were to go a bit further north, I don't think he'd be able to get away with it, though. I think, no, Yogstad would see it and probably kill it. Still, if we could go a bit further north. If we could see what's going on in the factory, that would work out nicely. Regardless of this one, Yogstoth 
is just building up, getting more metal extractors, and both players are fairly even at this point. Neither player really has much going for them as far as advantages are concerned. I mean, economically they're about even. Norm has more power, but that is wind generator, so it's a bit of a gamble. That will switch up a bit, although actually, no, this is a fairly high map. I think it won't. I think up here it's actually 1.3 or so is the minimum for wind generators on the high ground of Quicksilver. While Yogg's Thoughts instead went for Solar Collectors, and there comes the Flea going for the Melee Tractor Kill. It will not succeed, however, at half health and actually gets it on fire too. Thanks to Friendly Fire, I don't think that'll kill it, but I could be wrong. In fact, it's going to be close. Is that, that Metal Extractor is going to go down thanks to Friendly Fire. Norm did half the work and half the work done by Yogg's it's... Yogg's didn't mean to do it, but... Yeah, he worked with Norm. That power worked with that flea in jolly cooperation. After killing it, but still. Worked with it to destroy the metal extractor. That pyro... That pyro seems disgruntled. I, I think Yogg's should be keeping an eye on that one. However, one of the puppies is... Stunned out, which is good for Norm, but still... Pyro coming up the cliff. Venom and Redbag trying to deal with it. The Venom, however, has to walk up the cliff, which is considerably slower. And down go the metal, down go the wind generators. And this is the other weakness of wind generators, despite the fact that they are able to survive for a while. Or sorry, not survive for a while. They're able to get a lot of wind, a lot of power up on the high ground. They do not survive very long. And the Venom actually helping out once again, getting rid of the metal extractors. Sorry, getting rid of the wind generators in trying to get rid of this pyro. And Yogg's Doth, they're not even building any more units at this point, interestingly enough. Just going full on for a con- Okay, Yogg's Doth can build units, that's- That's just a mistake. Forgot- doesn't- has not put on repeat build, and does not have any units in the queue. That was a mistake. We do see a bunch of fleas coming from Norm, so Norm trying to go for another scouting run of fleas. That's primarily what they're used for. I mean, they can be used for raiding, but it's really hard to use fleas for raiding, especially against units that have any sort of splash damage, like Pyros. Pyros have a lot of splash damage. And... Oh. Okay, apparently 0.5 is the minimum. Alright, never mind then. I... Thought it was higher. Uh, apparently this is the wind range here, where it says... Wind range 0 0.5 to 2.5. I... Guess that's what the actual minimum is? I don't think I've seen it go lower than that. But anyway... Norm going for a very strong counterattack, actually getting... Nice Venom shot there. Wow, that was a very cost-effective attack there. And the Fleas and the Redback. So the Redback is walking through the fire and not being set on fire. So it's actually okay. I thought it'd be set on fire. Odd. Regardless, that Venom, that Venom did most of the work there. I mean, the, the Fleas, they cleaned up, but the Venom basically made it happen. And Flea ambush coming into the Pyro, but like I said, Pyro has splashed. That doesn't really do much. And... Venoms do one-shot stun Pyros, but the Redback unfortunately goes down before anything can happen. Any real damage can be done. Seeing more Venom Redback pairs being built up here. But unfortunately for Norm, these units are fairly slow. And like I said, the terrain advantage does not last that long when you're outside of the main bases. And there's a lot of map outside of the main bases, so... Spiders are still a tricky choice. I'm a little surprised that Norm is going for the choices he's been going for. I mean, the Hovercraft I can sort of see. It's not invalid, but spiders... Unless the map is a lot of cliffs, spiders are really tough to play. I mean, the Venom Redback pair is a good choice, but spiders are not easy to play. Unless the terrain really works in their advantage. And Yogg's not paying attention to this. In fact, gonna take some damage on their commander. Not gonna lose their commander, mind you. Gonna get it stunned out, but there'll be Pyros coming up. Pyros... I'll power over in the forest here. Or, well, not even forest anymore. Pyro in the small group of trees. And oh, kind of missed that red back coming in here. Killing off Yogstoth's commander. So Yogstoth down a commander. Halfway down an economy. Pyro counterattack along the north side of the map, however. That I will not miss because that's that's a big deal. The losing commander was as well, but still. Pyros here are trying to get rid of... The trying to get rid of that Venom. But also, very much getting rid of the main base, getting rid of the rest of the wind generators. Yogg'Toth basically just needs to get enough damage dealt here, I think. Well, the spider factory is going to burn up. 
No, not quite. Spider Factory not quite getting... There we go. Now it's down. Venom coming in here to try to deal with this. Will not be able to stun out all the Pyros in one go and thus not be able, ultimately, to stop them as a group. But at the same time, we do have Redbacks coming here. Redback Venom. Okay, not sure why the Venom is attacking the ground there. We have Redback Venom here to try to deal with this, but even then, it's... Main base is gone. Main base is totally gone for Norm. No factory or anything. Switch. Okay, there's a factory over here. Another spider factory. Oddly enough, Norm still going for spiders. Kind of surprised they haven't just jumped on the jump bot bandwagon, or for that matter, gone for light vehicles and decided just to bite the bullet. I mean, at this particular point in the map, light vehicles would work fine because it's there's no cliff. There's only this one path down here and the straight, complete straight planes. It's flat. Completely and totally flat. I don't see why Norm is going for spiders right here. I don't think this is going to really do any favors for Norm. In fact, I think Yoxeth's going to win right out right here. This is game. I'm calling it out. Nor Yoxeth has this. Like, Norm's commander is going to go down. The spider bot factor is not even up. The spider bot factor was a poor choice regardless. And Norm's commander trying to beam laser up as best as he can. But even that, not even focusing on the commander, just getting rid of all the economy around it, which isn't a bad idea. Get rid of the metal extractors and then maybe get the commander afterwards. Norm's commander morphing again and again. Not got... Okay. If they were morphing into more build power, I could see, because that would allow him to rebuild really quickly. But this is not a build power commander. This is a offensive commander. The back lines. Pretty far away from Yogg-Sothoth's base. Yeah, there's not much to be said here other than Yogg-Sothoth has this game, and it's just a matter of Yogg-Sothoth actually tearing down everything that Norm has. Because Norm has nothing. Commander, spider rod factory that is being produced, and that's it. Oh yeah, and a Lotus. Oh sorry, sorry, two Lotuses. I'm sorry, that, that was... Oh, and a couple defenders too. Oh wow, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's not going to help much. Although Pyros do get countered by Lotus is pretty heavily, but unfortunately we are going to move on to game two. And actually, no, it's not true. I don't hate spiders. Spiders are actually one of my favorite factories, but it's just that on this map, I don't think they're most appropriate. But no, spiders, I actually quite like Spiderbot Factory. I tend to go for it whenever I get an excuse to, but this isn't Melt or Frozen Planet. This Quicksilver, it works to some extent, but... Unfortunately, not here, and on the flat ground, I don't think it's the best choice. If it works well, that'd be awesome, but I don't think it's the best choice. That's all it is. I, I don't hate Spider-Bot Factory by any stretch. I just... I just don't see it as being the right option. And level 3 commander is... Okay, never mind. Building into build power. My mistake. There's 15 build power in right now. Norm, however, does not have enough metal to make that really pay off, but is reclaiming a bit to try to get a bit more metal. Caretaker is doing the work of building up the Spiderbot Factory while the economy being somewhat rebuilt in the southeast. But honestly, Yogstoth has more economy. Getting the northwest pretty handily. Can take everything, actually. Everything. I mean everything. Pretty much every part of this map, other than this... No, not, not even that. This area right here, maybe this area here, if Norm gets enough units, belongs to Yogstoth. Yogstoth hasn't claimed it yet, but it but does belong to Yogstoth. The world at this point is Yogstoth's. Norm might be able to break out of this if the commander does it exactly the right things. Light particle beam, beam laser is not a bad selection of weapons. But I think the puppies alone would be problematic. And the Venoms are coming in. Hermits as well. Which aren't a terrible idea. The Pyros probably move slow enough that it won't be a problem. But honestly, the Redbacks weren't a bad choice. Although, the Hermits do have much more health, but the Redbacks were not a bad choice. It's just that, at this point, yogg has more of everything, more units. We do see the army looks even, but once again, most of that is the commander. In fact, all but 700 of that is, all but 500 of that is the commander. However, the Pyros, unfortunately for them, jump into the same spot, and yogg able to, well, okay, not quite kill them, because the Hermit's not up in time, kills one. Gets rid of one of them, and not quite two. The, the puppies save their pyro allies, but even then, the pyros 
taking too much damage, saving Norm's base. Oh, sorry, that was Yogg's. Yeah, so say Norm has their entire military in their commander. That's it. Okay, their commander and this one hermit. That is all the 3.2k that there is. Yogg's not, however, is 2.2k of pyros. And without the Venoms to support, and if the pyros do... I think you can do a jump line move and turn... No, you can't. Okay, jump is to a point. That explains it. But you could do jump. No, you can do jump line move, apparently. Okay. So yeah, if Yogg'Sath goes for a jump line move, the Venom will have no chance. The, pup, the Pyros will go in, and Yogg'Sath will move on to round three. And we'll deal with who's facing who once that comes up. But for now, Norm... Norm about to lose their second Spider Factor, although the Venom's doing a, doing a bang-up job stopping these Pyros. In fact... That Spider Factory is going to survive, thanks to those Venoms, once again. And Lazarus Device on Norm's part, too. So Norm actually might be able to turn this around, thanks to Lazarus Device, it looks like. Let's see, Pyros are being rebuilt. It's a bit tricky, though, given the economic disadvantage. Yogg-Sath does have an economic advantage, but... Throwing Metal away at Norm, if yogg doesn't win the next engagement or two, I think Norm might be able to get back on even footing. In fact, at this point, Norm could push out slightly. Doesn't have units yet, but a small raiding party, especially if a few powers were built up, could get rid of a lot of... Okay, maybe not the Lotuses. The Lotuses, stop that. The Lotuses, stop that deadness tracks. Okay, maybe I do overstate how doomed Norm is, because I forgot Norm had a Lazarus device. That makes all the difference. If it weren't for the Lazarus device, and I'll say it weren't for the Venoms too, but largely the Lazarus device, Norm wouldn't have much of a chance. The Lazarus device is what's pretty much keeping them alive. But even then, Yogg-Soth does have map control. I mean, Norm has this area here. Yogg doesn't need much. In fact, the Pyro... The focus on Pyros is probably the biggest weakness right now. Moderators would do the trick of getting rid of the Venoms. Jax would also work because it would distract the Venoms, causing them to waste their attacks. And in chat, suggesting Scuttle as well, which... Would that work? Yes, yes it would. 8,000 damage would definitely work. That would kill it. Level 3, but no little armor. It's only about 2,600 health. And four pyros have been built, but at this point, Yogg-Soth is wisely just hanging back, building up more units, trying to just get a large enough army, and going for Jax. There we go. That is the option being taken, is Jax to distract those Venoms, because Jax will take a very long time to stun. However, Norm is moving out, combination of Pyros, Venoms, and Hermits, but, well, even with the Lotuses in place, there's not much that's stopping Norm from moving forward. Norm's getting a little bit timid, though. Booming back, which is wise, doesn't want to lose too many units, but was able to deal a bit of damage. Was able to push out a bit. Now, this northeast side is not quite Yogg-Sothoth. yogg has most of their control over the south side, as does Norm. So if Norm were to sneak up over to the north, I think... Unless Yogg-Soth has radar... No, Yogg-Soth does have radar coverage of the area leading north, though admittedly going far enough along the side would work. Not that I don't think Yogg-Soth would have given that away. I don't think Norm knows this. Norm... No, Norm is not aware of this at all. Norm is aware of where all of these units are. Is aware of that whole entire small base there, but... Yeah, that's the thing. Norm... No, Norm is actually going forward with some pyros. Going north with Pyros to take care of the north expansion, which Norm is actually going to be stopped with. However, Yogg's is moving all their Pyros up to counter the one Pyro, and Norm going with the distraction forward, using that as a distraction. A little bit tricky, though, given the sheer amount of static defenses that have been built up. Ven is going to try to do it again. The Hermits are coming up as well. This is where a crab would be useful, but unfortunately, I don't think it'd be built in time. And now the Pyro is moving back to defend the static defense laden area while. Norm goes north with Pyro to basically get rid of all his economy. However, Lotus is in a very opportune spot for Yogg-Sothoth. yogg not paying any attention to the north side, pulling back the units over to the south. And the north side, Pyro goes down the south side. We have a couple of Hermits go down and one of the Venoms as well. Yogg-Sothoth ultimately not able to do a whole lot of damage here. And the Jacks... First Jack has been built, the second Jack just being finished. With these jacks, that'll be it. 
Like, the Venoms will not stop the Jacks in any timely fashion. They stop the Pyros, no problem, but the Jacks, no. Jacks will not be stopped. Not with this, and that will basically seal it. I mean, the Commander has been up, and the Commander has moved forward. That's the one thing. I think the Commander moved forward. Okay, I think if the Commander moved forward, Norm would just lose. So there's a reason for that. But it's also the primary part of Norm's, Norm's military advantage. Like, do not look at this as 5k. Look at it as 2k. Yogg-Soth has twice the army value of Norm. Now, the Venom's doing a great job basically punching above their weight class. But other than them, I mean, the Hermits with the Venom support do great. And, okay, Norm, Norm is apparently not watching the stream. Good man, you're not watching, or good person. This is a, don't know if you're actually a man or a woman. It doesn't really matter. Good on you for not, for not stream sniping. But no, I'm not cussing you out, actually. I think you're, I think you're doing as well as you can with resources you have. I mean, spiders are a little trick on this map, but actually, I'm starting to eat my words here. Norm, despite being behind, the Venoms are doing, like I said, they're punching above their weight. They're doing actually a pretty decent job here, and unfortunately, Norm is out of position, and that leads Yogstot to go in for an attack. The Jacks, a couple of Jacks with the Pyros as well, and I think this is going to be it. Gotta be careful where I put my camera. But that's gonna be it. The Spider Factor goes down, and with that, Norm escapes, trying to deal with more of the map, able to get rid of the north side, able to clear that up again. Probably gonna try to rebuild once again, but at this stage, Yogstoth has such a massive economic advantage that the best thing Norm can do at this point would be to try to just nullify all that advantage, possibly destroy all the Pyros as well, but doing that's gonna be tricky. However, wait a sec. When did this turn into a Pyro graveyard for Yogstoth? Apparently the Lotuses did quite a lot of damage. In fact, there's only nine Pyros left, most of which are inside of Yogstoth's base. Yeah, about half of those powers were killed in the process of trying to destroy Norm's base. Or just destroying Norm's base. I mean, honestly, Norm has this. This is all that Norm has, and their commander. Rebuilding as best they can. I mean, Norm is tenacious. I'll give him that. That is definitely a good trade on him. However, them. However, Firewalker is up here. Firewalker better be stunned out, though. One of the Venoms... Oh, two of the... Three of the Venoms stunning themselves out. And this is where the Jacks come in handy, because they distract the Venom. Pyro's able to take them down, and while the Hermits get rid of the Firewalker, the Pyros get rid of the Hermits, and the game is over. 2-0 for Yogg-Sothoth. Norm did a really good job trying to pull back in after losing their initial factory. But unfortunately, that's all it was. That's all that could be. And Yogg-Sothoth has won this 2-0. Let's let's check the current events report. So Randy has unsurprisingly won against One Cut. Steel Blue has run against Bucky Danta, which is not surprising to me personally. And Silent Shadow wins by default. Happy Tulips apparently not arriving on time and being disqualified with no substitutes ready to take place. So in all likelihood, I will be moving on to the game between Exist and Steel Blue. See you guys, unless someone else mentions a better option, but yeah. Probably exists Steel Blue, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.